Hello, welcome back to another pen talk. This video is going to be about inks, so thanks for tuning in. I try to do something a little different now and then. Um, I have taken upon my mission to provide my viewers with something new and different that they may have not seen before and something which I think is of interest and, and worth sharing. So um, a couple days ago I was at a local pen pop-up store, the pen thing, um, and I he received a package, and in that package was um, a number of inks from this producer. And I've kind of heard about them a little bit, but not much. So I picked up these three. They were $10 a bottle. It's a 20 milliliter, so it's not inexpensive ink, but, you know, 20 milliliters is probably enough to use for most people for, for a good bit of time. And these are nice special colors and nice special properties, so um, I appreciate that. Uh, the packaging is pretty consistent. The Jungle Volcano is a little bit different because of the nature of the ink. But one of the things that you'll notice is that it looks like there's some definitely variations and probably sheen in both of these two inks and not the uh, teal one in the middle, the Moon Sky ink. So it's Jungle Volcano, Moon Sky, and Winter. So let's uh, take a look at some of the attributes of these inks. So I did my uh, color cards. And I'll try to see if we can pick up any sheening where I pulled the ink here, but we don't see that. But this is a nice teal. Uh, you know, I do try to do something consistent. Winter blue does have some nice red sheen, which I think we're picking up there. I mean, this is a really intense, clean blue. And then we come to Jungle Volcano, which I think is the most unique ink in this group. Kind of looks like an orange ink there, but when you pull it down, you get some incredible sheen and what looks to be like a green color. I mean, it's definitely unique and different. So the other thing we're going to do is look at chromatography. So we're going to start with the teal ink because that's the, I would call it the more common ink of this group. So you got some uh, greens, you got some blues, it looks like you got some grays there. And then we'll look at the winter blue. And that's just a clean, pure blue. I mean, really intense blue. It's light blue, darker blue, and real dark blue. So from this, you don't really see any, any evidence of sheening. There is something kind of evident there at the very top but certainly with this absorbent coffee filter paper that I'm using for chromatography, you wouldn't expect to see sheen because the ink is absorbed and you get sheen when ink pools on top of the paper and, and dries. So here's your a volcano, which is a very interesting combination of colors. A little bit of pinkish red, a little bit of orange, and then a little bit of a dark layer at the top, which I think is where that green comes in. You know, we're going to show this under different lights. This is LED lights right now. So we're going to mix these with uh, some from sunlight and see how the different incoming light that's reflected off of these samples impact the way that the camera picks them up, eventually shown on your computer screen or TV or phone, whatever device you're using to watch the video. Here we're under sunlight. LED lights come out with a pretty pure color. I'm very happy with how they reproduce these ink colors. So one of the things that I uh, like about inks is packaging because, you know, inks have to be able to be transported. You have to be able to fill easily with a pen. So these have a plastic cap which has a locking ring at the bottom. So I bought some plastic bottles that I use for my ink samples and 
they're designed for cosmetics and what they do is when you pull the cap down this locking ring seals it so when you unscrew it you break the seal so that's the way to indicate to the user that you're they're the first person opening up the bottle and I always like to look at what's inside the cap so the teal ink you can see is a definitely a bluish green we got some ink in the threads or whatever but because of the glass and plastic, you're not going to get that type of sealing or stuck caps that you might get with other bottles. So here's the winter blue. And as we take that cap off, we'll see a very, very dark, intense blue. So one of the things that's nice is there's a big, wide opening in that bottle. So there's probably very few pens that won't fit in there. That's nice in the design factor. When you get down near the bottom, it's probably going to be difficult to draw up the last bit of, bit of ink, but that's what your syringe is for. So as we look at Volcano Jungle, we'll see what that reveals when we look at the cap. And there you can see that, which looks like a pinkish, reddish, orange. I mean, it's certainly a different type of color, at least when looking at it from the cap. And now I've done my test to show up the sheen where I put a ton of ink on the paper and try to show you how that sheens and what really comes out is Jungle Volcano. It is an impressive ink from that viewpoint that it does take on a lot of different characteristics from the sheen. Here we are with the inks on three different papers. First, we're going to look at Fabriano paper, the one I use most of the time, and most of my pen reviews are done on Fabriano paper. The colors look nice. Less of a smear with the winter blue, seems to have soaked in a little bit, and we're going to do our water resistance test there. Then we move on to Tomo River. Colors are a little bit more vibrant. Not certain we can pick up any sheen in the jungle volcano, but as we know from the ink blotch, it certainly is there with the right amount of ink on the paper. And then we go into copy paper. As you can see, the winter blue certainly uh, dries and soaks in much quicker than the other two. And the other thing about copy paper is we'll flip it over and look at the other side, and there is some bleed through on all of them except the volcano one show through obviously yeah, I smeared a lot of ink there at the end but you can see the winter blue did soak through the most so one of the indications of water resistance is doing the chromatography after letting the ink dry for a day and I pick winter blue I think they're representative of the other three inks and I would say that there's no water resistance there I mean that ink ran just as well as it did uh, when the uh, test was done, when the ink was still wet. So we're going to drop some water on these three colors and then take a look at them after a couple minutes and see what the water does. Here's how it looks with the water just on there for a few minutes. We'll let it set for a few more minutes and then we'll wipe off the water and uh, see what ink remains. The water's been setting for um, about 10 minutes, so let's blot it off and see what remains. You can see that water has a lot of color in it. And based on the chromatography, these seem to have fairly minimal wind resistance. Jungle Volcano is the least. Your winter blue is um, second, and then your teal is third as far as having water resistance. The teal seems to have the most, but none of these inks would I uh, use or consider to be anything like a permanent type of ink. They're certainly uh, to be appreciated for their color and their look on a paper, but not how they react to water. This is the pen I put the monsoon teal in. It has a a blue and green color scheme here, so I thought that would be appropriate. I 
I called this ink a couple different names in the video. I just called it moon. I called it sky. I called it teal. But, you know, monsoon sky, I think, is the official name that um, Krishna is calling it. You know, good flow. Um, the, all three inks work well in the pen BBS pens, which I consider to be um, a good ink feed nib combination. So that's, you know, again, this is the more common color of the three inks, and eventually I'm going to do my teal video, so uh, this ink will become part of that uh, video. I now have probably close to 10 inks that I'm going to try to review, but that'll make for a long video, so we'll, we'll see how the motivation and when I get around to it. So here we have winter blue. This seems to go down a little wetter, maybe just that this feed a nib just right a little bit wetter. I mean, it's really hard to tell. There are there always are inconsistencies within pens, no matter who makes them. And yeah, that's one of the nice things about them. They're analog devices, and uh, they do have variations to them. Yeah, this uh, Fabriano paper is pretty uh, absorbent on ink, so... I don't expect a lot to, to pull on top. And, you know, they dry in about uh, less than 20 seconds on this paper, but on Toma River, they could take over a minute. So here we go with Jungle Volcano. I would say in between the teal is the driest, the blue is the wettest, and the Jungle Volcano is kind of in between those those two, probably closer in wetness to the winter blue. And it also dries uh, relatively quickly. So that's how they look, you know, this um, live writing on Fabriano paper. So in summation, I find these to be interesting, intriguing inks. I think the biggest challenge is if you want to buy some, where do you buy them? Obviously, I was very lucky to just happen to be in the pen thing, a, a local small pen pop-up store. And I know Brian, the owner, and we had a little get together with a few of our friends. And he just happened to have, uh, have gotten those inks that day in, in a box. So I'm glad I got these three. Um, I think I, I've kind of gotten as many Christian inks as I'm going to do in the beginning. I may go back to the pen thing and see if there's another color now that I've studied them a little bit more. The other, you know, here's another website that I found them on. Um, supposedly, you know, there are other websites that handle them, but they seem to sell out a lot. So, you know, I guess because there's one person making these that they are, may not be made in a very large quantity and obviously shipped from India to the United States where, uh, where I bought them is, is another thing that limits their quantity. So... Hopefully you've enjoyed this little view of, of, a, of an interesting new ink, at least a new ink to me, um, and um, something that you might want to try. So may you have many, many, many great writing experiences. Explore these incredible inks that seem to be popping up on, on the market, and enjoy your, your pens, nibs, and paper. So this is the end of the video. Until next time, bye.